Hello everyone, my name is Dr Matt Williams, I'm a tutor in politics and the Access Fellow at Jesus College, Oxford, and I'm delighted to be here today with... Uh, Neve Tua, I'm a first year geography student at Jesus. And? Um, my name is Dan, I'm Access Outreach and Internships Officer uh, for the Geography Department at Oxford. Terrific. So delighted to be able to talk to you both. The aim today is to talk about admissions for the degree of geography at the University of Oxford, for which there's been a bit of a change this year. In particular, there is a new admissions test that we will be concentrating on. But before we get on to that specifically, Neve, why geography? Why did you pick geography? What would you say to someone who is thinking about that as a possible degree choice? Yeah, so geography is famous for being the most kind of interdisciplinary subject. There's so much, there's so much uh, range of things you can study from geopolitics to climatology. Um, so whatever you're interested in within the field of geography, um, you can either specialise on or keep it really broad, which is something that's quite unique to the Oxford course. Um, a lot of other universities make you specialise in either physical or human straight away. And that's something that I've really enjoyed. Um, yeah, the department is absolutely fantastic. There's so many things you can do, field trips, lab work um, and opportunities for summer work as well. Um, so, yeah, I would really recommend it and I absolutely love it. <laughs> Great, thank you. And, and Dan, you studied geography before going into your current role. What sort of careers do ex-geographers go into after they've graduated from Oxford? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I also studied the undergraduate course at Oxford, so I was at St Catherine's College. Um, I finished in 2019, so I've been able to see people that I graduated with, uh, the kind of roles they've they've moved into. It's always a slightly cop out answer to say geographers go into all sorts of jobs, but they they kind of really do. Uh, it's quite hard to sort of pin down the geographer route, but just as a couple of sort of illustrative examples, I know people um, who have gone on to work for various civil service departments uh, in government. Um, people who've gone on to work for um, NGOs and charities, um, both, uh, you know, really big ones, uh, sort of household names like WWF and Greenpeace, um, but also much, much smaller, newer ones focusing on quite sort of specialist areas. Um, people who've gone into the private sector, whether that's insurance, banking, consulting, starting their own business, entrepreneurship, um, teaching, uh, academia, of course, some people uh, go on to further study. Brilliant. OK, thank you. And so, uh, Neve, you didn't take this new test that's being introduced for the first time this year, but you did take a test called the Thinking Skills Assessment or the TSA. Just sort of talking generally, what would be your advice for someone who needs to prepare for admissions tests at the University of Oxford? So the thing that I found most useful was doing uh, practice ones um, and making sure that I did them timed as well, just because I personally found that timing was my biggest issue. Um, so that would be my kind of biggest piece of advice. And then obviously it's kind of easier said than done, but trying to stay calm in the exam, because once you, you know, you start to get a little bit flustered, that's when timing goes a bit out of the window. So yeah, maybe just trying to, um, some kind of like breathing exercises and making sure that you're all ready to go in the exam. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that's great advice. I think a lot of the reason that people get a bit flustered and nervous is because they might be sort of allowing some creeping doubts to come into their mind that they're perhaps not Oxbridge material. But as we've dealt with in other videos, there is no such thing as Oxbridge material. And if you do prepare, you will feel a lot more comfortable about the test. And so that is part of the point of this video is to, to introduce you to the test so that it's not big and scary so that you do feel comfortable with it. Um, Dan, why did you or why did the department decide to introduce a test this year? Uh, yeah, firstly, just to pick up on on what Neve was saying, just to add um, slightly, I also did the TSA when I when I applied, um, and I think um, the biggest difference is that if you are on track to achieve um, the A level grades that are required for an Oxford course. Um, you are used to having basically aced most tests you've ever done uh, and, and getting sort of nearly top marks. Um, and then the admissions tests are designed. That's not going to be the case. Uh, so it will feel like you're doing badly because you are getting a lower proportion of marks than you would in an A-level exam. And that's absolutely fine. They're designed to be much harder so that, you know, we separate people out more uh, so that we can sort of use it as a, as a tool for uh, choosing who we invite for interview. Um, uh, sorry, just to go back to your, what was your question, Matt? So the, the question was, uh, well, as, first of all, what's this new test called and why why has the School of Geography decided to introduce it? Yeah, so the new test is the Geography Admissions Test, or GAT, G-A-T. Um, 
we decided to introduce this test um, basically because in previous years, um, the last few years, we've been using the uh, TSA, the Thinking Skills Assessment. Um, there's some kind of administrative reasons why uh, it was a good time to move away from that test. And also, um, we wanted to try uh, to use a test that was more geography specific um, because we felt that would be um, a better way to judge people for geography specifically um, than the TSA tends to be. So um, it's a new test this year, which means uh, you know, the, it, this, it's compared to the TSA, where there's sort of 10 years of past papers, there's, there's going to be less practice materials. Um, but my advice would be not to stress out about that, because um, the premise of this test is that you don't need to uh, revise. It's not testing outside knowledge. Um, it's about responding to information that we're giving you. Um, so the only preparation that you should need, really need to do is, um, is kind of do a practice test or two, uh, make sure you're comfortable with the format, um, and then and then do the actual test. So the idea is that really everyone is on a on a level playing field. Excellent. And we'll link in the description all of the practice materials that have been provided by the by the School of Geography. Uh, so that that would be uh, fantastic. Um, what's in the test? <laughs> what, what how? So as you say, you're making it more focused on the disciplines of geography. How have you done that? What's the structure of the test, and how how should people go about navigating it? Yeah, so the, the structure of the test basically reflects three key skills that we um, want to see um, uh, candidates applying for geography to, to demonstrate. Uh, that's critical thinking, problem solving and essay writing. Um, so these are tested um, by the three constituent parts. So um, overall, the test is an hour 45. Part A uh, is problem solving. Sorry, part A is critical thinking. Um, so this is uh, comprised of two subsections. For each subsection, there'll be uh, some written material, so an article uh, from maybe an academic journal, uh, from a popular website, or something that we've written ourselves. Um, and there will be five multiple choice questions uh, on that written material. So then you do the same again for the second subsection on a different piece of material. Um, and that's part A. Part B is problem solving. Um, so this will be similar. Again, two subsections. Uh, you're answering five multiple choice questions uh, for each subsection based on some material. Um, but for part B, um, those materials are not uh, written passages, but will be a chart, a graph, some data, um, something like that. And then finally, part C, essay writing. Um, as opposed to uh, the TSA, which used to be kind of like a broad essay question and you kind of just went off and wrote an essay about it, it's a little bit more directed. So um, what we will do is give you a passage or some kind of resource to read uh, to give you a bit of context or kind of get you thinking about a topic. Uh, and then there will be an essay question based on that uh, on that passage. Uh, and then you write an essay on that. So um, the timings timings wise, uh, part A is um, 30 minutes, uh, part B 30 minutes, and part C 45 minutes. Great. Okay. Thanks for that, Dan. Um, Neve, have you had a look at this test? What, what's your take on it? Um, I've not had a look at it yet, but um, as a geography ambassador, I think, Dan, you're sending it out to a few people, and I'd be more than willing to take a look at it. Um, the essay um, style in particular does sound a lot better than the TSA. I remember when I was writing mine, it was about, I think I ch chose a topic on veganism, because there wasn't really any questions that related directly to geography, because the TSA is used for like a number of other subjects as well. So I think having it more directed towards like a geographic topic um, would be a lot more beneficial and a lot easier to write. Um, so yeah, that sounds really great. <laughs> so Dan, in broad terms, how is the test likely to be used by admissions tutors? Yeah, so um, like like all the admissions tests, um, the GAT or GAT is uh, kind of one piece of the puzzle that we're going to use, um, we being admissions tutors, uh, are going to use to build up a picture of you as an applicant. Um, so there's no sort of pass or fail mark. Um, there's no sort of certain mark that you automatically will kind of get rejected or accepted from. Um, at each stage of the application process, all the information is looked at together. Uh, so if you are kind of weaker in one area, but stronger in one area, um, each individual piece of information is not going to rule you in or out by by itself. Um, so if you do the admissions test and you 
feel like you've struggled or found it quite hard one you probably didn't do as badly as you thought and two um even if you did struggle with it uh, and feel like you kind of got uh, you know you completely misunderstood one question or something don't worry uh, it's really not the end of the world if the rest of your application is strong it will be absolutely fine um and uh at, with the invitation to interview we look at all the information that we have on you you do the interview and we look at all the information we have on you again so um it's not a kind of jumping over hurdles in in sequence process it's uh, kind of gathering information and uh, and judging you fairly across all that information at each stage of the process great and as you say that is consistent across the other degrees that we offer at oxford okay so final word to you if that's okay neve um, any sort of tips and advice on anyone thinking of picking geography, the sorts of things they could be doing at school or outside of school, the sort of things they should be thinking about, what, and perhaps even the sort of things that you were doing when you were, you know, in year 12, year 13 at school? Yeah, so one thing that I continue to find is that geography is really anywhere. So one thing I really like to do is whenever I read like a news article um, that's come up that day, I try to kind of think about the kind of geographic angle of it. Um, and that's something that really helps, especially in interviews, um, kind of when you get new information, then trying to process it in a geographic way. Um, I think podcasts are really great, finding an area that you're really interested in, just listening to a podcast. Um, books as well, obviously. Um, but yeah, just trying to kind of look at the world around you um, in a more geographic lens. Sounds good. I do something similar for politics and sometimes that can be a bit depressing if you see power literally everywhere, <laughs> but still, I think it's much more healthy to do the same thing with geography. So that sounds great. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Neve and Dan, for your time. And uh, yeah, we will look forward to having many more fantastic geography applicants to the University of Oxford. Thanks both. All the best. Bye now. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>